Saya Andra Vinaka, Bula Vinaka. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all of you. Um, I'm not a keynote speaker. I was supposed to give introductory remarks, but I just want to acknowledge the Director of Environment and for the wonderful speech that she gave. And it's so wonderful to hear young women who can speak out on all these issues and so confidently and with so much knowledge and it encourages me, encourages me more and more that my lifetime's work hasn't been in vain when I listen to women like herself. So thank you very much for that. So once again on behalf of the Crisis Center and I also want to acknowledge our donors who have made this workshop possible and that's the DFED, the Australian government, and uh, which is part of our work and it's a pleasure and a privilege to welcome all you women in here. I also acknowledge our esteemed guests and partners. Um, Amitesh is a very good friend. In fact, he's learned from the best, the crisis <laughs> center. <laughs> so when I see all the press here, I said, oh yeah, this is just like a crisis center workshop. He was our operations manager for nearly five years, for five years, and at the moment he's our uh, financial consultant, so he still continues to work with us. So him and Joseph are good friends also, as well as uh, uh, um, business partners. Not that we get any uh, <laughs> no, I do enjoy a lot of their company, and it's a, and he's introduced me to recycling. And I just want to say that you know, since um, I, I, I always have had a compost at home, uh, that was from you know when we were very very young, many 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 years ago. We learned at school, and we did it at home. I come from Nawaka in Nandi, and uh, from the cane fields, so there's no there were no rubbish trucks coming around and so on. So we had to compost and uh, dig holes and put all our cans and things, very few cans in those days. And uh, now I hardly, my house help, Akesa tells me, we hardly, maybe once a month, we put the rubbish bin out on the road because so much of it is recycled and goes into the compost. So thank you Amitesh for introducing me to recycling and giving me and my family and friends an avenue, an outlet for all the things that can be recycled and for, uh, you know, for us to not put it in the, in the um, garbage trucks, but to have it, you know, give, it, uh, give it a more useful purpose. FWCC is privileged to partner with Waste Recyclers Fiji and IUCN to be part of this program on gender violence against women and human rights, contributing to empowering women engaged in the recycling sectors and as major custodians of the environment. I really wish to co uh, commend the two organizations to recognize the various forms of violence women undergo in the course of their lives and the import importance of your agency in having the confidence and self-esteem to access justice for yourselves and for other women and girls. Fiji, as most of you would know, has one of the um, uh, highest rates of violence in the world. In fact, we are double the world average. The world average, global average, is one third. We have two thirds. Two thirds of women in Fiji and other parts of the Pacific, Kiribati, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, experience one or other form of violence, domestic violence, sexual violence, emotional violence, intimate partner violence. So very, very high indeed. And I don't believe that there is any woman here who hasn't experienced sexual harassment, rape, domestic violence, or some form of discrimination only because we are women. Children in this country also, when we talk about women and girls, we also talk about children as young as four months have been sub subjected to sexual assault, and these are police records show us that. And that is not a good place to be. Patriarchy, male-dominated structures and systems enable enables this gross violation of women's human rights daily in Fiji and the Pacific and the rest of the world. Often the most vulnerable are the most disempowered. The work you do is, is essential to the preservation of our world, but often folks involved here are seen as being at the lowest rung of the ladder. And when you are at the lowest rung, the discrimination, the violence and all those things are multiplied. 
women often are relegated to work that is seen as unimportant and therefore lacking dignity. We take away people's dignity. Of course, housework is where we all are at. No matter where we are, those women who are in paid employment, they have the double burden of child rearing, uh, giving birth, ensuring we are pregnant every now and then. No, that's part of the job. And then finishing off all the housework also. So that's a double burden. For many women, just the whole day, drudgery of the work takes away a lot from them and disempowers them more. Housework is not seen as work. I am just so grateful I have somebody to help me in the house, to help me keep my house clean. I can't do that work. It's too much for, to ask for a, a woman. Many of us in this room, many of you in this room, you know what I'm talking about. Poverty is a killer for women. This program this week, I just wanted to talk a little bit about structural violence, often as a result of the structural violence against women that exist. Because once we have one, we have the physical, sexual, emotional, the coercive control, and so on. But we also have what is called structural violence, where we deny women the basic human rights, access to education, access to health facilities, reproductive rights, reproductive health facilities, economic development of women, lack of access to resources, and a total lack of privileges that men are often given as a right. So that puts us in a very bad situation. The program this week aims to empower all you women who are present here by learning more about your power, to take agency to better your own lives, and not having to ask other people to do it for you. You will be, at the end of the week, you will be providing agency for yourself, of course, with support from the people who are your supporters. This workshop also contributes to the commendable objectives of Waste Recyclers and IUCN. I was reading some of the articles. To ensure your participation in developing and implementing solutions and to taking leadership in this work. Women must be part of the solution, a major part, because we are the custodians. I just wanted to make a request, and I'm glad that the Director for Environment did not mention the word, the word waste pickers. I think we need to find a more empowering word for the women who do this very, very important work. So I hope by the end of this week with Ilive Buli, who will be your facilitator, uh, that you will be able to yourselves coin a phrase for what you want to be called. So I want to congratulate everyone to wish you all the best for this week and for waste recyclers and for all other businesses, of course, healthy, happy workers contribute to better productivity, effective productivity. So if you keep, and that's a motto at the crisis center, keep our, look after our staff, ensure they're happy, they're healthy, and we get the best results. So it's good for the two organizations to take this initiative. I know this week there will be some sad moments. There'll be a lot of realizations of your own lives. Remember, I've done this work for over 30 years, and I know I've seen women come in here after the first day, and then they suddenly realize what they are going through. Because a lot of times, as women, we don't think about ourselves. We put our problems, our health aside, because we're looking after our families, our children, and our extended families, yeah? and so on. So we hardly think about ourselves. This week I urge you to think about yourselves, to talk about yourselves, to talk about your experiences, and find those solutions. Yeah. So there will be sad moments, but I can assure you, you will have a wonderful time on this journey of discovery and empowerment. Again, congratulations, and I wish you all the best.